looking at worked example 2 in the shaft design section. A material processing machine for an outdoor mining operation has a power transmission shaft running between frictionless bearings at A and E. These are the points where the bearings are located. The shaft consists of a smooth solid round 080M40 cold drawn material. That's the material type. This is where you get your yield strength, your brineal hardness and your ultimate tensile strength. To be turned to its final size, it's going to be put in a light to be turned to its final size. Okay, I have highlighted crucial data here, outdoor mining operation, power transmission shaft, bearings at A and E, and the shaft is made out of this type of material and it's turned, which in other words it has been machined. The reliability required is 95% at F, that is after E, and 95 percent at f one meter a one meter pulley diameter inputs power to the shaft with vertical down bell tensions of five and two thousand newton time to draw this is what we've gotten so far we've got a bearing at a don't know yet what's happening on the inside of the shaft and we've got a bearing at E. Next to E, we've got a pulley with belt tensions that's going downward. So our belt is going downward. So I'm drawing a side view of this. There's the downward belt tensions. 5,000 Newton and 2,000 Newtons. At C, a pulley takes power off the shaft with vertically up belt tensions of 1000 Newton and 3000 Newton. Assume 100% power transmission efficiency from the belts and ignore the weight of the pulleys. The machine is subjected to rapidly applied loads and can be subjected to falling rocks from time to time. Due to wet and dirty conditions outdoors, the pulley at C requires a special guard around it. The guard will need two 4.5 mm diameter seals of B and, at B and D. The seals will need a 4.5 mm diameter groove to be machined into the outer shaft diameter. Let's highlight. This is where all the vital information has been highlighted. One can see here that we have a pulley at C, vertical up, vertically up belt tensions 1000 and 3000 Newton. 100% of the power is transferred to the main shaft. The pulley weight will be ignored. The loading is rapid, subjected to falling rocks from time to time. And the conditions is wet and dirty. In the, out, uh, in the outdoors. At C we need a special guard that is sealed off from the elements. We need two grooves machined into the shafts at B and D. Okay. okay, the pulley here, we have a pulley with upward belt tensions of 1 kilo newton and 3 kilo newton. That's pulley at C. This pulley is supplying the machine with power. 100% of the torque is going to the machine that's supplied by the motor. Then we have the pulley at F, which is 5 kilo newton and 2 kilo newton downward tensions. The groove at B and the groove at D will be used to 
put in some o-rings with a guard that will fit over it to be able to protect the pulley from uh, the elements. These belts here from pulley F connects to a pulley on the motor with a key connected to each shaft and there you can see the motor drawn. Let's put in some dimensions. Okay. Here's our dimensions. We got 500, 800. The seals here that will be installed will be 100 on the left hand side and 100 on the right hand side. And then we have this bearing being 300 millimeters away from the pulley. Let's look at what are we ignoring concerning the drive. Okay, we're ignoring the pulley weight. The pulley weight will just add to the belt tensions. It will be added to 7 kN on this side. It will be subtracted by from 4 kN on this side if it had to be included. Belt efficiencies. The efficiency of this belt drive there and the efficiency of that belt drive there if the motor is 10 kilowatt and the efficiency is 98%, we, we would have at this point here on the shaft, we would have about 9.8 kilowatts because of the losses due to friction. Bearing losses, very minute, very small. We don't have much losses on the bearings. So uh, just to let you know, there is losses on the bearing, but we, the bearings, but we ignore it. Motor efficiency, the motor itself does have losses, at the wall it might draw 5 kilowatts, but the actual output might be less due to the, the frictional losses and the eddy current losses and the copper losses within the motor. So we just assume total power at the shaft of the motor. Ignoring the actual efficiency of the motor. Let's draw the mathematical model for the shaft. Okay, here's our mathematical model with all the relevant data in there. We are now going to do a shear force and bending moment diagram in order to determine the maximum bending moment. First we need to calculate reaction RR and RL. We have assumed that both are going upwards, but it might change because we're having a force that pulls upwards. Taking moments from RR, we have RL equal to 7.1 kN. Here we had 0 0.5 times 4 upwards, plus, this is also RL upwards, 1 meters times RL also upward, which is anti-clockwise. So these two are added together. Equal to the only downward clockwise force which is 1.3 times 7. Gives us an answer of 7.1 kN. Now taking moments at RL. So the answer is negative 4.1 kilonewton. Thus RR 
does not go upwards, but the direction is downward. Okay, now let's look at the bending moment diagram in the shear force diagram. Shear force in kilonewton. RL goes down by 4.1 kilonewton. Then the pulley with the 4 kilonewton force, the upward belt tensions, will absorb 4 kilonewton and stop at 0 0.1 kilonewton. Then we have the right hand reaction that will go up by 7.1 kilonewton. Then the 7 kilonewton force on the downward belt tensions of the last pulley will then come down to zero. Since 0 0.1 kilonewton was absorbed here, it will go up to 7, 7.1 in total, and then we will have 7 coming downwards, taking it back to zero. Let's look at the bending moment diagram in kilonewton meter. The area D that sits below the zero line will tend downwards. Diagonally, due to the area there, we have a distance of 0 0.5 meters for that length. The area size is 4.1 times 0 0.5 will give us a downward direction of 2,05 kilonewton meter. The next area is this area D which is below the line, so the bending moment diagram will tend downwards. Looking at the area, you got 0 0.5 as well as distance, times 0 0.1, which will give you 0 0.05. Since we've ended at 2,05, and it's tending further downwards, you'll be adding the 0 0.05 to 2.05, and we're ending at 2.1. Finally, the area sitting above the line will now take it to zero. We're having at this point 0 0.3 meters, 0 0.3 times 7. It's above the line, so the, the, the bending moment diagram will tend upwards. That will give us 2,1 going upward, thus closing the diagram. Now to look at the bending moment values where we have the seals. The distance is there is 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. This area there, that small area, is tending downwards. So calculating that area, we're having 4,1 times 0 0.1. The answer for that area, which is 4,1 times 0 0.1, that will give us 0 0.41. In other words, that area size is 0 0.41. And if we have 2,05, and we need to find what's the bending moment right there, we need to minus 4.1 from there. So our final answer here for our bending moment will be 2, 0, 0.01. So 2, 0, 2,05 minus 0 0.41 equal to 1.64. Thus the bending moment here is 1,64. Focusing on the bending moment here, here we have a small area of 0 0.1 in length and 0 0.1 high. If we multiply the two together, we get 0 0.01.
at this point we've got 2,05 that area is still below the line so we're going downwards to that point there since we've got 2,05 there we add 0 0.01 thus the answer will be 2,06 newton meters the maximum bending moment there is 2,1 kilonewton meters just correction 2,06 kilonewton meters the bending moment diagram is in kilonewton meters our material is 080M40 coal drawn this is a table that uh, was drawn up to be able to get the most basic materials that uh, we would use but you can google the very name here 080M40 and you can find a spec sheet when you type 080M40 in google pdf you are able to download a spec sheet from one of the local manufacturers and see what do they give for cold drawn yield strength and for the ultimate tensile strength and as well as the Prunel hardness so you can google that and just check what material values values you get in the meantime we got for cold drawn 080m40 cold drawn 430 for the yield strength 570 for the ultimate tensile strength and 165 BHN for the Brunel hardness let's calculate the yield shear and the shear the endurance limit Now let's look at the shaft loading. Okay, no motor power was given, no speed and motor torque as well, but they did give us the belt tensions. From the belt tensions, we can calculate the torque, as the belt tensions gives us the exact power. That we are looking for that's operated that's operating on the shaft 1.5 kilonewton meters of torque is applied to the shaft just a quick discussion on how the torque operates the torque is applied from the motor through the belt system and the shaft experiences the torque exerted at the belt the torque goes through from F through E through D and to C at C the full amount of torque is experienced through the belt drive system to the machine after C B does not, does not experience any resistance in the shaft at all there is no resistive torque A as well the shaft from this point F to C is where the resistive torque is happening. Thus the torque at B and A resistive is zero. So the torque at F, E, D and C is equals to 1500 newton meters. Thus the torque at A and B is equal to zero as explained previously. Let's look at the bending moments looking at the bending moment diagram at A we know this is point A the bending moment there is zero at B the bending moment is 1,64 at C the bending moment is 205 at D, D is here, correction, this is point E. 
So with D, the bending moment is 2.06 and at E, 2.1. At F, the bending moment is zero. So summarizing what we've discussed at the different points, A is zero on both bending moment and torques. At B, the torque is zero and the bending moment is 1,640 newton meters. At C, the torque is 1,500 newton meters. And the bending moment is 2050 newton meters. At D, the torque is 1500 newton meters as well as E. The bending moment at D is 2060 newton meters. And at E, we have the maximum bending moment of 2100 newton meters. Now at F, we have 1500 newton meters. And the bending moment at F is zero. Right, looking at which regions we're going to calculate. Region A is not necessary to calculate. Region B is also not necessary to calculate. Region C, however, that's where we will find our pulley. And it's also not necessary to calculate. Unless we're going to consider the key. The effect of the key on the shaft, but this part we will ignore. Okay, it's not part of the question. D, we have a reduction in area where there's stress concentration. We have the maximum torque and we have very close to the maximum bending moment. So D is one part that we will calculate. E, we will definitely calculate because we have maximum torque and maximum bending moment. At F, at this point, this is where we're going to have our key installed. And we need to look at stress concentrations in shaft sizes after we made accommodation for the key. So we have three regions we're going to calculate. First region will be E, then E, and F, finally. Fact of safety. We'll be looking at all three regions while we take careful consideration what's happening with the fact of safety. The operational reliability in this case is 95%. And factor K2 will be 1,152%. The next factor we'll be looking at is the dimension factor based on the approximate diameter. We'll be calculating the approximate diameter. We had K1 is 1.333 and K2 for 95% operational reliability is 1,152. That's for all regions. The reasons are SUT approximately equal to 600 megapascal and it's machined, the material, and the reliability is 95%. The approximate diameter at D for K3 is equals to 6 multiplied by the brackets. In the brackets we have the maximum moment, the moment at D, the torque at D, to the power of, of a third outside the bracket. 91,61 millimeters moved up to the upper 5 millimeters, which is 95 to be able to utilize the table. Let's look at all other regions we are analyzing to diameter prox. We got 91.95 millimeters and taking up to the upper 5 millimeters is 95 millimeters. So we've got 68,66 rounded off to 70 millimeters. Now let's go look at the K3 on the table. For 90 millimeters we've got 
1.301 and for the 70 millimeters we've got 1.270 here we got region F 1.270, region E 1.301, region D 1.301. Now let's look at K4 for these regions. The only place where K4 will apply is at region D. K4 is for stress concentration. The shaft at E is smooth and the shaft at F is smooth. Thus, both of these K4 factors will be 1. The reason, no stress raises. For K4 at region D, we need to analyze it the following way. We have the geometry type looking like this for region D. What we need to be able to determine the bending as well as the torsion side which is the same is to get a small d and then have the radius at that point and then big D big D is the D approx we've calculated minus 2 times the radius will give us small d and once we have that we can go ahead to calculate d over d and then r over d and once we match these two to one another, where they meet one another, going straight across will give us our KT value. The KT value is part of this formula. This is the bending formula. K4 is equals to 1 plus Q. Brackets, inside the brackets, KT minus 1. That's the KT value. The Q value is obtained from this graph diagram. Here you have your radius for your groove and this is your ultimate tensile strength. Where these two values meet you go straight across and you'll be able to select your Q value. When you put it in here with your KT you'll be able to calculate K for bending The one on the right here is for torsion. You'll be able to calculate KTS, the very similar diagram that I showed you first. You also will be using it for the KTS. And then you'll be using these values to calculate your Q, to select your Q from your table. This is the radius of the groove. It's your brinial hardness. And when these two values meet one another on these arcs, you'll be able to get the value for key, for Q. The highest K4 value, whether it's bending or torsion, the highest value will then be K4. Here's our shaft geometry at D. We've got big D that's 90, which is the D approx. We've got big D, which is 95. We've got big D, which is 95, sorry for this, 95 diameter. And from big D, we can go and calculate small d. The small d is equal to 90.5 millimeters. Looking at ratio d over d is equal to 1.055. Now for the final ratio, r over d. Equal to 0 0.0249. Now let's use these. Uh, answers we've calculated in our graph KT selection. Our R over D is 0 0.0249 and it's right in between 
0 and 0, 0, 0,05. Thus, it's on the line, the second line, that goes vertical. Our d over d value is 1.055. At this point, we have 1.05. 1.055 is very close to this line, so it's no need to look any further. So we can see that this line is touching the first line that we have there. This is very close to this line, so we take it as being on the line. And this part, we can take it as being on the line, just a little bit next to it. So going over, carry on straight, which will give us a mark somewhere there. Somewhere there. Okay. Here we have 2.2, 2.4, 2.5. Right? 2.55. That's about 2.57. 2.58. Okay. So we, we, we can say that that's about 2.58. Yes, KT for bending is 2.58. Let's look at KTS for torsion. Our R over D is exactly at the same spot. Somewhere there is 0, 0.0249. It's exactly the same. And more or less on the same line that is shown here. Right, let's go look at our d over d we also have a line there of 1.05 which is very close to 1.055 so we will follow this line go up just next to this line we will have 1.055 so somewhere there on that line there somewhere there close to that that's about 1,8, or you can say 1,795. Whichever you decide, it's still fine. 1,795. That's what we got for our KTS. Here we go. KTS equal to 1,795. Let's go look at the Q values for both torsion and bending. Okay, we're having a radius of 2,25. This is for the radius, the R value. We've got 2,5 there. So 2,25 is right there in the center. Right in the center. There's our center line, just to see it more clearly. Let's go look at the SUT. Okay, we need to look at our SUT. Our SUT is 600, and between 0 0.7, which is 700 megapascal, and 400 megapascal, that is where our SUT will be. In order to get the exact value, we're going to calculate some iterations. Adding 700 megapascal to 400 megapascal and divided by 2 will give us the center. It is more or less the, in the center. To get closer, we need to see if we can add the two upper parts. Our answer was 550. And if we add 700 again to it, and divided by 2 again, we get to 625. So 625 is close enough. So since we have that is 625 just a little bit below there, we can move forward. So I'm going with that straight line just a little bit below. My mark will be somewhere there. Somewhere there. Right. So we're having 1.6, 1.7. 1.75 that's about 1.785 or 1.79 let's see so we have q equal to 
1.785 it's an approximation so is this one and this one here because you are judging with your eye whichever value you get as long as you are close and you show that you understand the steps it is fine now looking for the Q value for the torsion it's the same line we got 2.25 going upwards we know we're in the center here somewhere there in the center you need to be more accurate by measuring with your ruler halfway I'm just showing you for understanding purposes our Brunel hardness is 165 so this is for aluminium alloys the next one is annealed steels which means the Brunel hardness is less than 200 this is for Brunel hardness greater than 200 so this is the line we're gunning for so going up still in the center that's where we're touching and going over somewhere there you can see that somewhere there that's where our mark will be that's nine that's not in the middle so it's about 9,35 9,4 that's what we're gunning for thus our Q value is approximately equal to 9,4 so K for bending and torsion is equal to just a quick correction this year is 0, 9,4 not 9,4 0, 9,4 okay this Q value here is 0, 0,785 0, 0,785 Let's just scratch that out and get the answer. Our Q value for K4 bending is 2,24. K4 torsion is 1,743. Thus K4 is equal to 2,24. The maximum between the two is thus K4. K5 calculation. K5 is equal to KUA for use and abuse and for transportation plus KC for corrosion plus KL for low type. There are, there are many other K values that can be taken in consideration for K5 such as hub pressure. There are different types of factors that you can include into this K5 calculation if you google how to calculate your K5 value from different sources you'll see that the NASA shaft design incorporates a lot of other factors for this course we'll only include these three however you are not limited to these three these values depends on what you see as an engineer, what's happening, or designer. KUA use and abuse depends on the environment where it's going to operate in, whether it's in the mines, or whether it's going to operate in a submarine for corrosion, uh, or uh, the machine is going to be used outside, you need to incorporate corrosion. The loading depends on suddenly applied, gradually applied, and impact loading. So these loading conditions need to be evaluated by the engineer. Other factors such as temperature expansion, hub pressure, and all the other factors that you can Google up when you type in NASA shaft design document, you'll find out which other factors there is. So for K5, for use and abuse, for KUA, I will use an increase of 10%. Why? For transportation, dependent where the shaft is going to be transported to, if it's not manufactured on site and assembled on site, and the environment that it's going to be operated in it's subjected to falling rocks from time to time i can even go to 1.2 due to falling rocks
Okay, so that needs to be taken in consideration. KC, I'm using 1.3 because the question mentions dampness in dirty conditions. So corrosion is all to do with rust. So there's damp in dirty conditions present. So 1.3 is the highest uh, factor you can use for the KC. So it's 30% increase. For the loading factor, I'm using two rapidly applied loads or suddenly applied loads. So you're using double what you normally have for gradually applied load. When a force is sudden, a nice example is a locomotive suddenly pulling the cards behind it, where the linkages just pull tight. That's a suddenly applied load. Okay, let's calculate K5. A5 is equals to 3,12. One thing left out in the formula on top is the multi multiplication. Multi One thing left out on top is the multiplication. It's not adding it together, but it's multiplying it together. This K5 factor is applicable to all regions. The factor of safety for D is equal to K1 times K2 times K3 times K4 times K5. It will be the same for all regions, but the values will be different. We have the factor of safety at D equal to 13,96. Factor of safety at E is equal to 6,23. The factor of safety at F So we're having a factor of safety of 6,085 at F So our final factors of safety is, is Factor of safety D 13.6 at E 6,23 And then what we've mentioned at F The maximum is 13,96 now for the diameter calculation at the different points. By using the fatigue formula, minimum diameter formula, we will be calculating the minimum diameters at each position. D minimum at D, at E, and at F. And that will be the diameter that you can use minimum. You can go larger, but not less than that. After substituting the torque of 1,500 uh, <clears throat> Newton meters and substituting the yield here, 248.11 megapascal, and substituting the maximum mo moment, 2060 Newton meters, and the shear the endurance limit, which is 164.445 megapascal, all squared. And the factor of safety for the D min, for our value at D, I got 99, uh, 0 0.0996 meter or 99,6 millimeters. Rounding it up to the, to the upper 5 millimeters, the next round number it's 100 millimeters. These are the shaft sizes available on the shelf. You can buy directly from the shelf, which is a little bit larger, and then it can be machined down to your 100 millimeters and your grooves and everything that you need in the shaft. Let's look at the answers for D min at E and at F. So your minimum shaft size at E is 60 millimeters. In other words, D is much more stressed than E. So with F as well, we've got a diameter of 60 millimeters. So D is the most critical point that is loaded to the max. Let's look at 
what the shaft would look like if you're going to machine the shaft out of a solid piece of steel of more than 100 millimeters diameter. Normally they provide 6% more or a little bit less. When you machine it, you can get it exactly up to the size that you want. We cannot, however, leave the diameters at E and F as 100 as well. It would be fine for the shaft, but to use bigger bearings might be more costly or bigger hole sizes that you need to, to drill. So uh, in order to avoid using bigger sizes or larger sizes, we will try to machine the shaft up to the minimum diameters that we have calculated. If a key needs to be accommodated F, we can follow the following procedure. By cutting into the shaft a key slot, you will decrease the strength of the shaft. So the minimum diameter at F will not apply anymore. But however, you can use a stress reliever formula. The formula is your diameter that you're going to get after you've applied your stress concentration you will have your minimum diameter you have calculated this one not a rounded off value the strength value not a commercial one value that you always round off to but a strength value include it in there and see if it will increase your diameter to a size that's appropriate for you to include a key Okay, so we're having an answer of 65 millimeters. What generally is done, the shaft size diameter is stepped up by 15%. Uh, so by manipulating the formula, the diameter before and afterwards, you get a ratio with a square root due to the squares. Okay, and... Uh, if we have used the rounded off value, this is not the original actual strength value. We, in some cases, you might increase it way above what you need. So if we've used this diameter, we might have ended same 65. But if this was about, say, 55.7%, it would have given us under 60. And 60 would have been fine. So be careful. Always use the strength value when calculating your final diameter for your key. So thus, our final diameter there should be 65 millimeters to accommodate the key. So let's draw up a rough free end sketch to see what the shaft would look, look like. We having our shaft, we having our shaft with a radius there of Two comma two five. That is our radius. Our diameter is one hundred millimeters before you go into the groove. This was our approximated diameter for this size was ninety five. So one hundred is very close. So adding the groove, you can have a diameter there of ninety five. But this is what you need to concentrate it on. We doing the stress concentration was done on this diameter, dipping down. So whatever diameter we calculate was this diameter here. Yeah. So we've got 100, stepping down to 65 millimeters in diameter. The shaft strength here was determined at 60. So the 65 millimeters will be right through instead of going down to 60. does not create a need for a larger diameter. So there's our diameter, our final diameter. This is where our pulley will be located or a coupling, whatever you want to include there. On this side, the left-hand side, 
where you have the other groove, it will remain the same. You will use the exact same size as you've used there. This will automatically fall within the strength pack due to its lesser bending moment and no torque at all. Thank you very much.